What is up? Welcome to another Bible study with me. Today we are in 2 Corinthians 3. We're going to be going over verses right now. Uh, just 1 through 3. We might even go over 1 through 6 if we have enough time. So go ahead and get your highlighters out, get your pen, and before you go into it, subscribe and make sure to comment below. So, here's what it says. It talks about living letters. And this is really, this is all a metaphor. Verses 1 through 3 are an extended metaphor about the idea of writing a letter. And Paul uses a little bit of sarcasm, which I 100% appreciate. He says, are we bringing, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like, some letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are Christ's letter, delivered by us, not written with ink, but the, with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Okay, so first of all, remember, uh, this church in Corinth didn't really know the heart of Paul. They didn't really like consider Paul to be like the best teacher. They almost considered him to be a false teacher, because this church in Corinth, the whole time, they had just tons of false teachers. And... Also, Paul wrote in the beginning in 1 Corinthians, um, telling them what they need to do wrong, and it kind of left a bad taste in their mouth. As you know, this church in Corinth was struggling with one person in particular. Um, and this one sin ended up, um, this, uh, the father's son um, had relations with his father's wife. So, yeah, um, a big case in the Bible. And so in 1 Corinthians, is all about Paul being like, man, you need to forgive him, give him opportunities to repent. Um, you know, come down hard on him, like, make sure he doesn't sin again. And they're like, bet. You know, now, in 2 Corinthians, he's like, wait, I, wait, wait, you took it way, too, way, way too far. This shouldn't be something lackadaisical, but you should also be giving him some room to grow. And so here he talks about a living letter. Remember, it's an extended metaphor, and we'll go over what the extended metaphor is. So it says, do we need, like, some letters of recommendation to you, right? He's literally saying, do we need to write you some letters saying about, like, why you should listen to me? Or, like, do I need to have some other people, some of the other apostles tell you, like, why I'm good and why you should be listening to me? Um, and, it, and it's such a sarcastic comment. And, you know, I appreciate the sarcasm here, Paul. I really do. So then it says in 2 where we get into the metaphor. It says... You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are Christ's letter delivered by us, not written with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets or stones, but of tablets of human hearts. Now, verses 2 through 3 are actually a prophecy, specifically a fulfillment of prophecy. Now, if you go ahead with your Bibles with me, we're going to flip all the way to Jeremiah 31, 33. Luckily for me, I have tabs in my Bible, so it makes me go super duper quick. So, Jeremiah 31, 33. Now, while you're here in Jeremiah 31, 33, right, uh, I would highlight where, in yellow, I would highlight where the prophecy is, so it's in Jeremiah 33, and then write down where the fulfillment is in the New Testament. So, um, and here it says in Jeremiah 31, 33, Instead, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, the Lord's declaration. I will put my teaching with him then, write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. So when he says here um, about the idea of not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts, it's talking about this reference to the Jeremiah prophecy. And also this idea of tablets of stone comes directly from the New Testament or the Old Testament where, you know, Moses received tons of wisdom through these stone tablets. In fact, there are actually two more prophecies that are being analyzed in this, or at least references to the prophecy. Number one is Ezekiel. So if you guys are with me, go to Ezekiel. Uh, go to chapter 11. Go to chapter 11. Ezekiel 11. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time flipping to Ezekiel. Okay, okay, okay. So Ezekiel 11, specifically verse 19. Um, now, if you're with me as well, I would go ahead and highlight this as well. Uh, I'm going to highlight verse 19 in yellow. He said, I will give them an integrity of a heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their bodies and um, give them a f heart of flesh. Now, I would write in the margins of this verse where the prophecy fulfillment is in Corinthians. So I would put 2 Corinthians 3, call it good. Right, and so that's the second one. And then there's one more prophecy. There is so many prophecies just in this one line that are being fulfilled according to Scripture. Uh, let me get to 2 Corinthians. I have it written down here. I believe it is in 
It is in Ezekiel 36, 26. Now we're going to go all the way to Ezekiel 26, 36. I know, I know it's a lot of flipping today, but trust me, um, it'll, it pays off in the long run. So, Ezekiel 36, 26. Okay, and here it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will move your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So, it's also, again, a prophecy. Prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. So, go ahead and write in the margins again for that one. That happened in 2 Corinthians 3. Now, um, going back to Corinthians, the tablets in general and the tablets of stone are specific, specifically referring to the stones that were given in the Ten Commandments, right? God gave these ten stones to the Israelites when Moses went up to Mount Sinai, and he came down in it, and he was like, whoa, why is everybody worshiping a different God now? So, um, that's what the general reference to is in this letter. Um, but it talks about how we are all, when we were saved, we were pretty much impregnated um, and written down uh, letter by letter of the Holy Spirit. So, let's go ahead into the extended metaphor and what it means. Now, the extended metaphor um, has three parts to it, okay? There is the ink, there is the tablet, and then there is there is the pen, okay? So, and the letter as well. So, it says you are Christ's letter, which means you are an emissary. Uh, you are essentially the the messenger of his word. So you are a letter. Remember, a letter is sealed. So the information within God, once you learn it, is sealed within that envelope, a.k.a. it's sealed within your hearts during this time. And so um, this letter is given to people when you tell them about your testimony. It means we're supposed to be accurate reflections of God in our life. So you take the letter and you give it to someone. It's like sending it out to someone. I have two pen pals, so I would send a letter to them and they send one back to me periodically. And it says, when in this letter, the contents are always gospel-filled. It is what God is doing in your hearts. Now, how do they know the contents? Well, it's written in ink, it says. It's written in ink by a pen. Now, what is the ink? The ink is the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes, we forget that. Not only is Jesus real and God is real, but the Holy Spirit is in us. Like, I mean, it is literally in us. We wonder why we sin, okay? We wonder why we sin. Um, and the difference between someone who is lost and someone who is saved is that they both sin, but one feels bad about their sin, and they feel bad because the Holy Spirit is in you, convicting you, being like, hey man, you know you shouldn't have done that, so what are you doing? That is what the Holy Spirit's goal is. Now, uh, and then lastly, the person writing with the pen is Paul, right? Or in this case, um, it, it would be us, but specifically in this time, it's referring to Paul. And it's referring to Paul, it's referring to a Paul, because he's told to write on our hearts. He's a person who writes on the lives of believers. He's literally writing and impacting the lives of believers in this church in, church in 1 Corinthians um, by telling them how to act in a godly manner toward, towards restoring a brother. And we say this all the time, but 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians are often called 2 California and 1 California because they are so representative of, how, um, of the characteristic and culture of California right now. Now, what's so important about this living letter, okay, is that that we are giving this letter, which means whatever's in this letter is permanent, okay? It's permanent. It's not like you can erase this letter. Every letter was sealed with a little seal. Um, you can probably Google it, but it was basically like a little red circle. Um, instead of us licking the envelope, they would just, pew, they would stamp it down and be like, all right, it's good. And so they would send these letter outs. And what it really means is that people are looking to be saved, guys. Like, people want to be saved, and they're looking for reasons to make it so you so they can not be saved. And so as Christians, we can all we can all agree with this, that we are called to a higher standard. And oftentimes, I can't tell you how many times somebody's known I was a Christian, I say something that maybe isn't the most biblical or maybe isn't the most godly, and they'll be like, I thought you were a Christian. Can Christians do that? Right? So this this world we live in is looking for ways to bring us down and looking for ways to be like, hey, you know, being this part of a Christian is okay. That being this part's not. But the fun fact is, guys, you're not a lukewarm Christian. You're either a Christian or you are not a Christian. And so when we sin, we're actually giving people an excuse, right? People are looking towards us as models of Christ. And if we keep sinning and we keep falling into temptation or sin, right, then they're like, man, I guess it's okay for a Christian to do that. When in reality, it's not okay. And like I said before, the difference between a lost person and a saved person is how they feel bad about their sin. A lost person doesn't feel bad because they don't know any better. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them to guide them. But um, saved people do. Saved people do. And so really, verses uh, 1 through 3 are talking about this extended metaphor and this idea that we are sending letters to people. We are being emissaries and messengers of Christ. 
Let me know your takeaways down below and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I would love for you guys to tune into Bible study if you do a little bit every day. I love you guys. Peace.